August, okay, all the way out there in JA, we're looking forward to hearing his vibe, hearing his energy, and you know how it goes. So, of course, special guest, you there? Yes, I'm very much here. Greetings, greetings. So, of course, let the listeners know, let the people know who you are and a little bit about yourself. Well, here are all who's listening. Um, I'm Aristotle the Great. I am an upcoming Jamaican artist from Mandeville, actually. Mandeville, Manchester. And so far, I am just somebody who's a lover of music. Yeah. I'm a multi-instrumentalist and looking forward to enjoying releasing some new music soon. For real, most definitely. You know what? You've released some great tunes already, which we'll talk about. But I wanted to know... What got you into music? Tell us a little bit about your journey, how it all began. Well, you know, um, I'm 30 currently. Okay. Uh, that's my age currently. Not ashamed, not ashamed of my age, never. Uh, but 28 years out of that was spent in church. Okay. Uh, I was born in church. I was raised in church. So at around 10 or 12, I got my first instrument from my granduncle. He bought me a guitar. Yeah. And an amp as well. So uh, that started up. And then being at church, hearing instruments being played, having a um, passion for that part, that's the part that really interested me every time I went to church. Okay. So eventually I became the church's musician um, with my brothers, actually. I have two brothers, and all three of us ended up being the main musicians for the church. And that's how I just got practice exploring gospel exploring different genres and eventually i started out on the drums yeah um spent some time on the drums but eventually went to the guitar um then the bass then the keyboard so um that's how i got this love for music by being able to create it myself for real for real and you know with that you know, every time I talk to some great artists, you know, they always say their journey starts in the church. And I wanted to know what happens in the church. How does it kind of all evolve into these great artists? Well, the thing about it is as much as I am no longer a part of it, I can still see and appreciate it for what it does for people yeah. who um, are trying to find themselves in the grand scheme of things. It gives them something to believe in. It gives them something to look forward to. There are a lot of people who look forward to going to church every Sunday because to them that's their you know, release, that's their de-stress. Yeah. And while there, they also get to have an emotional time. Um, even though it's centered through Christianity, mm. they are still end up exploring themselves to know what type of person they'd like to be, what role they'd like to play in the grand scheme of society. Yeah. So um, Aristotle, who I'm named after, um, always said it's the mark of an educated mind to entertain a thought without fully accepting it. Mm. So while I don't fully agree with everything that the church does, I do agree that it plays a vital role in spirituality with a lot of people. For so real. based off of that, uh, like for myself, that's how I knew I wanted to do music there. Yeah. So Definitely. It was a really spiritual place. For real. And you know, people are asking me, so I've got to ask you, where and why did you choose your name? Where did that come from? Um, well, fun fact, that's my real name. Okay. My father gave me that name. So my full name, um, that's actually my middle name. Okay. So it's Alain Rohan Aristotle Buchanan. That's the name I was given from birth. But during COVID is where... And I know COVID affected a lot of people. Yeah. So during COVID, I got the time to really reflect, sit and think, even though I was still working. But still got the time, more time to reflect, like, what are you really doing? What do you want to do? What direction do you want to go in? Mm. And that helped me to gain a lot more self-confidence than I have ever gained in my entire life. And just add the grit to it. Yeah, for Keep real. that Jamaican flavor. Yeah, you know what? That sounds like a king's name, you know, still. <laughs> it's yeah, not like a I king. So. <laughs> for real, for real. Well, um, in Greek, in Greek history, Aristotle taught Alexander the Great as well. Yeah. So I also did that with that in mind. So if he taught Alexander the Great, he must have been great himself. For real, for real. And you know, when it comes to music now, how would you describe yourself? Would you put yourself in a particular genre, or would you say you're quite eclectic? Well, I'd say on the eclectic side for now because um, this would be the first time I'm doing I'm I'm doing my own music. I've I've been known um, 
in and around Mandible to be the covers guy, the singer. Yeah. So I used to sing a lot of covers at open mics whenever I could. Um, walk with my instruments because adding that extra flavor to poetry, a lot of people liked that part. Yeah. So um, I used to be a lot of covers, but right now, since I'm exploring my sound, even though I am still flexible, I love the fact that I'm still flexible in my music. Mm. So for now, it's really exploratory and it's fun. I do appreciate what I've created so far and look forward to, you know, eventually deciding whether or not I want to go with a particular genre. But for now, it's Jamaican music because it's coming from a Jamaican. For real, I like that still. And you know what, tell us about some of the tunes. So I know we've got Program, we've got Burn or Break, first of all. Tell us about the, about those two. Okay, so Burn or Break was co-written by Adrian Allen. Um, that song really has a history. I wrote that, we wrote that song from um, 2011 when I graduated Church Teachers College. Okay. So we we were really good friends. He's a musician as well, great guitarist, big up Adrian Allen, wherever he is. Um, so he and I used to hang out a lot, play covers as well. He used to work with his acoustic guitar all over campus. The school knew us as the music guys. So he wrote the song. Believe it or not, he wrote the first verse okay. and we came up with the chorus. Yeah. But he kept saying, all right, dude, write your verse. And I was like, eh. <laughs> I mean, I'll try. I mean, I'm not, I'm, at that time, I'm not really a songwriter. I'm just trying to get out of college. Yeah. So, but I love the music and you recognize that. So, so he wrote the first verse years from 2011. I never, ever got around to writing a second verse. But every time we performed part of that song, it always drew a lot of attention. Fast forward to 2020, yeah. um, down at the end of 2020, during COVID when there was a little bit of leeway to, you know, meet and greet, get yeah. this stuff and go back into lockdown. Mm. I met up with him, went over to his place and he was playing the acoustic guitar. Okay. And he started singing the song again. I'm saying, you know what? It's about time I finish that song. You know? So I wrote my second verse right there and then five minutes. So <laughs> five <laughs> minutes? Years, he was like, yo, write your verse. And I'm like, eh. But right then and there, years later, it took me five minutes to write my verse and he was like, yo, that's solid. Yeah. So, Couple couple months later, I told him, yo, I'm going to take on music serious and I wanted to join me. So he he said it wasn't really something he wanted to do at this time in his life. But he said, guess what? It's a two-hour song. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm just going to gift it to you. Do road with the song. So okay. that's how Burner Break came to fruition. Everything else, the arrangements, the verse, the, the arrangement has been changed from what we were used to singing. Yeah. So everything else was me, but he he co-wrote that song with me and gave me his blessing to perform it as one of my first serious projects. For real. And how about program? Program, no. Uh, program was written on a very emotional day. Okay. Honestly, um, I I had a fight with my partner at the time. Okay. And I was like, yo, I don't think this fight is really warranted. Um, honestly, I'm a good person and I think that she's just, she's not, she's just not used to the type of man I am as yet. And so our squabble wasn't that important. Okay. And we just get back and I say, yo, more while if we just stop this program, you know, cause I'm a good youth and mm. you know, you don't have to worry about certain things with me. And at that time she wasn't listening. So the only thing I could turn to was what I've always been used to, which is music. So I just penned the song. Yeah. Fabian Titus had sent me the rhythm before. Big up Fabian Titus, where we're raised in the world. Um, he's also part of the village music group that we're, we're running. So, yeah, he sent me the, the, the rhythm and um, he said, let me see what comes with it. I had the rhythm for a while, but on that day, wrote the song, voiced, voiced the verse, my verses, and sent it to him. And he's like, yo, yeah. So he slapped something on there too. And we shot the video in um, St. Elizabeth. Okay. That's also on our Vivo page, The Village Vivo. Yeah. Um, on YouTube. But yeah, that's how program came about. Wow. And Sunday Evening is the most recent song I did with Pablo George. Big up Pablo George as well. Yeah, my Great girl. Afrobeat upcoming artist. But we did Sunday Evening and released it in January on the 23rd. Yeah. And that was also just us exploring our musical talents. And that song was really him letting me know, yo, I have this song that's unfinished. This is what the song's about. Let me hear what you say. 
Mm. By the way, myself and Pablo George are, have attended the same high school and primary school, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But we we weren't really like friends yeah. during those times. Mm. But the, the fact that we both decided to do music, that's that's something we could both relate to. Yeah. So he sent me the unfinished song, I added my part, and it's just basically a song about a, a girl who you met and y'all have a vibe, but now that you're, you leave and you're texting her on Sunday evening, say, yo, wait up, and she's not even responding. Mm. And it will cause you to like wonder, like, okay, was I confused about our meeting? Or yeah. did I read wrong signals? Because everything was going well when we were there. Yeah. But now that I'm texting, you know, that I'm reaching out to you, you're probably not answer where you're there. Stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so okay. That yeah, man, I like, I like all the sounds of them. I like that you've you know, explore different topics of your emotions and your feelings and they're definitely nice nice tunes, so we'll be playing those later. And I know that you're signed as well to Deville, Edge Music Group. Tell us about that. How did you kind of link up with that? Okay, the Village Music Group is actually myself, Shane Williams and Fabian Titus. Um, I listen to a lot of music and DJ Khaled, I remember DJ Khaled singing in one of his songs called Nas Album Done. Yeah. He said, start a label, run it, sign yourself. That's a major key. Mm. And so when I listen to the music, I'm like, well, um, instead of finding a different label to like feel sorry for me and take me up or trying to impress them, why not try out that, that DJ Khaled um, line? Because that's something DJ Khaled is doing and it's turning out well for him. So yeah. while it may may take a while to develop do it so i approach those two um shane williams from stage sound solutions big up state big up shane that's my manager um and just let him know say yo we could start up something for ourselves and we just examine the resources that each of us had and realized if we put it together it can actually work and we can actually use it to support other artists so um we decided all right a lot of businesses can come from this partnership Mm. So the first official thing we did was the The Village EP and the videos that are on the Viva page currently and more projects to roll out from there. So that is how um, we're assigned to The Village Music Group because we are The Village Music Group. Nice. I like that still. And I like the fact that you've taken some advice from a fellow DJ who's doing re very well, DJ Khaled, and, you know, took that and put that to yourself. That's a great thing to put forward for the youths. Yes, thank you. I, I think that's definitely something that people don't realize about music, that it's still one of the most effective forms of education, really. So to hear that they were able to tell us those things, but the most important thing to do is to apply it. Yeah, man, definitely. And so with that now, what what kind of influences you, what kind of inspires you as an artist, as a person? Well, as an artist... um. I'm an introvert, really, so I like to be alone or with my partner, uh, really. Um, okay. But most of my inspirations come from just sitting down and meditating. Okay. Um, the truth is I'm still a very spiritual person, even though personally I'm not really subscribed to a religion, but I do believe spirituality has to do with you as a person, finding yourself okay. believing in a higher power and just zoning in on that power and reassuring yourself every every chance you get. Yeah. So most times I meditate, um, just sit there, just think about, just reflect on what happened, um, potential. I like to do that in a very peculiar place. But that's where most of my inspiration comes from as an artist, really, that I remind myself that I have a story to tell. Yeah. My experience is, is worth telling. Um, Chronix is another person I learned from. Okay. Big up Chronix, wherever in the world. Um, Chronix... Did a did a mixtape. Um, I think it was called um, Roots and Chalice. Yeah. With uh, yes, and on the mixtape he had a recording there saying, "What do you want to talk about? What is your experience? Don't you want people to know that?" Because um, he's not a reggae artist, but if he decides today say he wants to write about reggae, that's what he's going to do. Yeah. So things like that just to reassure myself that my experiences are worth our stories worth telling. Definitely. And, you know, everybody has a journey. So definitely worth telling, for real. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully somebody out there can actually relate to yeah. being at that space and time in their life at some point. In time. For real. And, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you is that, you know, yourself being in Jamaica now and having such 
a diverse amount of music around you and the influence that Jamaica has across the world, whether people want to admit it or not. And I wanted to know, what impact does that have on you as a person who lives in Jamaica, knowing the impact that it has on the world? Well, honestly, I think that's one of the biggest things I have going for me right now, which is why I'm approaching this sector so confidently, even though we know that the music industry is, is very volatile right now, a lot yeah. of shifting parts, a lot of things happening all over the world. But um, I'm still a part of my uniqueness as Aristotle the Great is that I'm Jamaican, I'm an intellectual Jamaican. Yeah. And so uh, my brand, that that um part of me that I'm born with will shine out in anything I put my mind to. Also, um, I think I have, I think I'm the type of person who's so okay with learning yeah. that I am I know I'll be learning as I go along. So I already am learning from other artists' mistakes and I'm also learning from my own mistakes. So mm. I have to make it as long as I'm consistent. For real. And you know, earlier I wanted to Kind of pick up on it you spoke about poetry i know you're a teacher as well i wanted to know a little something about those two things from yourself oh well i'm i'm a math and physics teacher okay. um, at manchester High school uh, i teach up to the cape and csec level so yeah. most times i'm teaching for exams okay. that's still going on that's, that's definitely something in terms of balancing my time that i do my best to cope with yeah. um my students so far it the thing is, math and physics has always been a, a, a topic that people are afraid of. Okay. But I try to approach it in a very confident way so that my students and anybody else who's really interested in the topic can actually okay. um, appreciate it for what it is. And I include a lot of it in my lyrics. Mm. Um, I write from that place because, as I said, music is one of the biggest forms of education. So, yes, I'm in the classroom, but I also believe that in my music I can educate those same students, if they're listening, or other people who aren't in my classroom, I can probably educate them on something too. Uh, yeah, my Poetry is where I really started out um, with writing. So I didn't start out writing songs. I started out writing poetry. And that started from um, a very long story, but short version. A, yeah. fr a, a friend of mine, Dino, big up Dino anyway, in the world, also another artist, he invited me to play for his um, partner's birthday okay. and I ended up going to what was an, an open mic which was just straight poetry. I didn't even know that existed in Mandeville at the time but going there really I was like wow, um, I like this. I think I should continue coming and after coming a couple of times I realized that okay I can I'm going to write one for myself Yeah. And so I started writing poetry from there but I think that definitely helps me with my songwriting Yeah, for real, 100% and you know, it's a great stress relief as well, poetry. <laughs> oh, could you repeat that? I said it was a, it's a great stress relief. Poetry is great for oh, relief yeah. stress. Oh, very much. Yeah, and, and DJ Kat, yeah, you're, you're a poetry up. Yeah, definitely. Oh, blessings. Up. blessings, I appreciate love, that. Love love image and how you, you represent for creatives and females and Africa and just overall positivity. Give thanks, I appreciate that. So you know what, what's next for you? What can we look forward to hear from yourself? Well, it's for now I'm trying to build my catalogue. Okay. Um, I, I do acknowledge that you definitely need a certain amount of songs before you can entertain generally. So I'm just trying to build my catalogue with singles and I'm also the type who believes that I should, per I should build an audience first yeah. before I start to drop bodies of work. So that's really what I'm trying to do took a hit at the start of this year because I somehow lost my TikTok and my old Instagram account. So for those who were following my old Instagram account, um, I had to make a new one, yeah. Aristotle the Great, Aristotle.di.great. So I had to make a new one. I'm just trying to get back those followers, but as well as um, garner a whole new audience. So I had up to about over 4,000 followers on the last one. It was going well. And I just woke up one morning and just didn't have access to it anymore. And oh, I tried oh. everything. Wow. It, wasn't, it, it was deleted. I didn't post anything. So I was just, I'm just trying to build back that audience now. But I don't see it as a loss. Yeah. I can still as an opportunity to know who was really an aristocrat. Big up all of my aristocrats. Anybody who's been a fan of me, anybody who's been following my page, Big up everyone at my aristocrats. For real. And of course, speaking of that, 
tell us how people can follow you on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Tell us your link so they can check you out. Okay, so um, The Village Vivo, that's the YouTube page that I'll be using to post my content from now on. But I do have a separate YouTube page, Aristotle the Great, um, that I was thinking of doing more personal content and leaving it there. But whereas my music is concerned, I mainly release on Audio Mac. So I have an Audio Mac channel, and The Village also has an Audio Mac channel, and it's d.vill-edge. The village made from the fact that we are, we're from Mandeville. So, yeah, I like um, it. the village, yeah. yeah. Um, Instagram Aristotle dot D, it is D I dot great. That's the new channel. Just um, support whenever you can. I reply to everybody as much as I can whenever they do follow me. Try to build a conversation, see how well they, they've explored the content, and if I'm doing anything that's attracting them. Facebook, I have a, a, a Facebook page called The Lyceum named after the Greek version of Aristotle. Um, he had a school okay. called the Lyceum. That was the school he made first after learning from Plato. Okay. So I named my Facebook page the Lyceum, but it's still all about Aristotle the Great Village, everything there. Oh, oh. Twitter, same Aristotle the Great. Um, so I'm, I'm covering as much grounds. Um, TikTok, Aristotle um, underscore D dot, and it's GR8. So Aristotle the Great. So I'm just spreading um, the message as far and wide as possible and checking for the feedback. For real. And, you know, I can't have you on here and not ask you to sing a little something. Would you be up for that? Yeah, I'll definitely be up, to the, up, up for that. Okay. Um, oh, also, my music is available on... Some of the music is, already, is available on all other platforms, so you can find me on Spotify as well and Apple Music and everywhere. But um, which one should I sing? What are you feeling? Go with what you're feeling and then do that one. Okay, um, I'll, I'll stick the burner break. So, uh, but I'm really nervous. I get really nervous. So hopefully, the you've got this. Work. Um, but um, burner break. I, I think I'll sing on the move. Uh, okay. Burner break. You have. So I'll sing on the move. That was one of my first songs that I wrote. Okay. Um, by myself. So the first verse goes. First phase, break a day, the hustle crowd so you know I'm awake, get dressed, breakfast, sweet kisses from my missus sends me on my way, I'm on to the grand long walk, long drive, yeah I see you player but to talk I couldn't find the time, on site, being supervised, my professionalism gets skepticism of all kinds. Yeah, you guessed it, just a black man wrestling the pressure and making ends meet through the struggle. So you listening, thinking that's basically me, but that ain't the whole picture, only part of the puzzle of my L-Y-P-H-E. And it's mine, because it's you, N-I-Q-U-E. I'm a man of confidentiality, so how you view me is just a little peek, because when you see me in these streets hey what's up then i take my leave no offense taken please i'm getting in my groove for the paper chase to survive and if you mean me good well much obliged but call me berries with this no disturbed sign because i am on the move <laughs> yeah you know what you didn't need to be nervous, man. People are loving that, sending me fire, saying they love your vibe, they love the energy. Just keep it up, keep going with that positive vibes, yeah? Yeah, I really appreciate that, dear God. And big up to everybody who's listening right now. Appreciate the energy and definitely we'll be keeping it coming. Anytime. And you know what? Keep the link and it'll be great to have more tunes from you. You've always got my support, yeah? Of course, DJ Kat. You're yeah, a man. Of course. <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah, man. And you know what? I hope you have a blessed rest of the day. I know it's still quite early up there, out there in JA. But have a great rest of the day. And it's been a blessing to speak with you, for real. Yes, same to you. And thank you so much. This goes down in my history. You're the first interview I've ever done. So Nice. Yeah, man. Keep it going. Bless it. We'll speak soon. Yeah, man. Take it easy. You too. Bless, bless. Yes, people. Please do go out there. Go and check him out. Go and see what he's all about, what he's been doing. Okay. It's been a pure blessing to speak with him.
okay but right now we're going to be playing some tunes from him going to feel his vibe feel the energy big shout out to all those who've been sending lots of love lots of blessings it's always appreciated for the artist <laughs> Yeah, I see the emojis coming through. Big shout out to him each and every time. That one is called Program. We're going to be playing two more of his releases, of his tracks, okay? This next one is called Burn or Break. Make sure you take a listen. Here we go. Never thought no girl would ever get me down like this. She got me down in the way, not some love. I reminisce of all the times I used to wonder if she care and all I hide and all disguise until she finally disappear and I say, Hey, on the baby. What if you discover if you would have been my friend or if you could have been my lover? Now I'm sorry, all the days more, my feelings undercover cause me heart I hurt and my soul just a suffer. I won't burn and I won't break. I won't make the same mistake. Whatever you give me, I will take this love for you. Got me burning like the heat of seven suns The energy that emanates from her essence Not the perfume but the care coming from staring at me Lock me down like earthy words you When I'm around you impress Because a long time I'm not free about you Now see my gesticulation Invasion of body, mind and soul is my goal You never know before now But I am making you know that I won't burn and I won't break Yes people, that one is called Burn or Break We're now taking you to his latest release Okay, it's called Sunday Evening Make sure you go and support, go and show some love here we go. Another Sunday evening on my lawn. On those shady. I'm telling the girl. She's not home, she's all eating sweet ice cream and cake. I am home alone, this feeling can be my fate. Is she loving someone or is it just be herself? I never had no business to be caught in her spells. In a state of calm, put a rather in all my baby. They shelf my thoughts, is what I found out lately. Do not fear my past, I said goodbye so clearly. Not say you're shady, you're just a little crazy. <laughs> Sweet ice cream and cake But I'm home alone This feeling can be my fate Is she loving someone Or is it just be herself I never had no business To be caught in a spell That's right, Aristotle the Great. Go and show some love, go and show some support, go and check him out, okay? And of course, big shout out to all those who've been sending lots of questions, lots of love, lots of blessings. It's always, always appreciated.